Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, <clears throat> let me just say what an honor it is to be in the presence of the first man to land on the moon and the last man to land on the moon. Uh, I've said before, uh, Mr. Armstrong, a thousand years from now, no one will remember anybody in this town, but your name will be known. Um, uh, your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, was uh, quite revealing. You said NASA has been unable to articulate a master plan that excites the imagination and provides a semblance of predictability to the aerospace industry. And you went on to say, we will have no American access to and return from low Earth orbit in the International Space Station for an unpredictably length of time in the future. For a country that has invested so much for so long to achieve a leadership position in space exploration, this condition is viewed by many as lamentably embarrassing and unacceptable. Um, Captain Cernan, you talked about John Kennedy and his vision. And we have on the wall here where there's no vision, the people perish from Proverbs. Uh, I'm concerned this administration, this president, uh, has no vision. I'm also concerned that the next flag to possibly land on the moon will not be an American flag, but rather a Chinese or a Russian uh, flag. And let's not forget the national security implications uh, that are at stake here, as Mr. Griffin, Dr. Griffin talked about. So many people ask me, and I have Austin to Houston, so I have a lot of Johnson Space employees in my district. Um, been to that, that room where mission control took place in 1969. Um, and so many people ask me, you know, we landed on the moon in 1969. Why has it taken so long to go back? Uh, why has it taken so long? And, and why is it important today that we go back to the moon? And so with that, I, I'd uh, like to recognize you, Mr. Armstrong, and, and Captain Cernan to answer that question. The, uh, the America was uh, was re reveling in in the uh, successes of the Apollo program, uh, but uh, there were after uh, you win a big game, why there's a letdown, and uh, that was an opportunity for uh, some to say, well, maybe you know we we made a big investment in in uh, space exploration and space flight, perhaps it's time to reap some rewards. So let's look at Earth for a while. Let's be in low Earth orbit and, and spend a lot of time studying Earth and the environs of Earth and, uh, and, and get a, a great return from this investment. And indeed, that's what we did. The, the, uh, the shuttle, uh, one of the most magnificent flying machines ever built with the highest technology machines, uh, however, cost more to fly and couldn't fly as often as had, had been predicted by its designers. Uh, due to reasons that are completely understandable in, in retrospect. Uh, but uh, it, it used up a, a lot of the human uh, spaceflight budget and there was an inadequate opportunity to develop be developing uh, follow-on spacecraft that would would uh, succeed it, and I think that is the principal cause of, of the uh, question that you ask, uh, Captain Cernan. After I came back from the moon on uh, Apollo 17, I got on my soapbox at Kennedy, talking to the people at a homecoming, and I said. You know, we're not, you know, Apollo 17 was the end. Yeah, you know, how does it feel to be the tail of the dog, the last one over the fence? And I got up on my soapbox and said, it's not the end, it's just the beginning of a whole new era in the history of mankind. And I truly did believe it. I said, we're not only going to go back to the moon. We will be on our way to Mars by the turn of the century. Well, my glass was half empty for a long time until Constellation came along and then it became half full. And it gave this country something, I think, to look forward to again. It re-inspired those young people to dream. And dream the dreamers of today are the doers of tomorrow. And if we don't inspire those young kids to dream, there isn't going to be any tomorrow. And that's what I was looking at. That's what it was, that's what it was all about. I uh, 
I, I forgot the other half of your question, uh, Congressman, but uh, inspiration of these young kids and a goal for them to put their hands on and look forward to, I think is what this country needs more than anything else. And I'll say it again, I'm at a point in my life where Neil and I aren't going to see those next, next young Americans who walk on the moon. And, and God help us if they're not Americans. Uh, that if there's somebody else, uh, or if it's a team of people that is not led by Americans, uh, we're not going to be here. We're going to take this last trip off this earth long before that happens. That's unfortunate, and I never believed it would be that way, but it will. But I'm satisfied with that as long as I know, and when I leave this planet, I want to know where we are headed as a nation. That's my big goal. Uh, I, I just feel so strongly about that, and I, I, I feel sometimes helpless other than to share those feelings with ladies and gentlemen like you, because I'm not making the decision to make it happen. I can only try and get people enthused about pointing, their, pointing themselves in that direction. Let me just say thank you for your service and thank you for your, your inspiration to not only Americans but the world.